social structure of the world is changing very rapidly. And we have to do that with changes. So we can change the kids. It's not an adult world anymore, it's a children's world. And we gotta give them a structure with positive attitudes about working and living in the world. Because this world is not gonna disappear. You're always going to have a system that's messed up. You aren't going to change that. Forget that. You can change yourself. And by changing yourself, you change your kids. You make them a better person. And so that's why I recommend get your kids in some kind of physical activity as early as possible. Don't just have them sloughing off playing these video games and stuff. It's just developing the mind physical body is most important because without this vehicle you have no mind so you got to work the physical first and then you graduate into the mental apparatus normally I say the emotional level lasts because it takes time for a young kid to develop uh, knowing the principles of right and wrong and all of this but we're in a new generation that means our thoughts have got to change, our beliefs have got to change, which they're all bullshit anyway. I'll tell you the truth about it. You've got to release the old so the new can come in. So many people get hung up in the old stuff, and they're afraid to release the new, because it's unknown. People feel comfortable with something that they know. Gotta step out of that box, man. Take a chance on life. I did. And I had all the disadvantages on my side. master, if you have a living master in your lineage, you are protected through life. Like I didn't ever have to work for the man the last 50 or 60 years because I do this work. So all the benefits outweigh the, the, the negativity of living in the mainstream. And we have to live in the mainstream, let's face it. But do it in harmony. Do it in righteousness. You ain't gotta be the, the Jones boy next door. Or keeping up with the Joneses and say. That, that, that's all kindergarten stuff. You're elevating yourself and your consciousness higher than that. And there is a higher consciousness. Some people call it God or whatever, I don't but there is a relationship between you and Mother Nature that we've lost connection with. Living in these concrete streets, we forget to feel the earth, breathe the air. We gotta get back to the innocence. And you still have your sophistication, but it's a, it's a childlike innocence that we cultivate when we do with these arts. We start to kind of relax into the art. You can't do it being rigid. Being rigid stops your chi, stops your prana. That's why I always hop on you, relax, 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 so the energy can flow. And then when your energy is flowing, your mind can flow. If you're an intellectual trying to block everything in your mind, you're wasting your time doing these arts. You gotta be like the bumblebee. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful path. You know, and there's many paths. This is only one way that I express it. But all paths are good. It brings a joy in your life. It brings harmony in your life. I'm not saying we're not gonna have ups and downs because we are. That's the nature of this planet kind of duality. You gotta have right and wrong, up and downs, and black and white. 
It's the nature of this planet. But if you learn how to harmonize with that, you know, my teacher told me many, many years ago, and I try to impress it upon these guys, masters are made in the beginning, not the end. So it's not a struggle. Everybody said, well, I gotta learn this, I gotta learn more, I gotta learn more, baloney. In your mind, if you can conceive something and believe it, you can achieve it. It's not about blind faith or any of that. That's an ignorant way of doing something. You gotta believe it, conceive it, and you can achieve it with your mind. That's why in Tibetan Buddhism, that's your highest spiritual art. And that's why it's always saved to the last. You start from the Taoists doing Tai Chi, Chi Gong meditation, then you go into East Indian doing yogas, and then finally you graduate into the Tibetans, working with the higher mind. That's your that last step. And a lot of people will, will, will just gravitate to one another. But if you're lucky enough, if you can broaden your awareness and study all three, then we got something. I'm still trying to get it after 50 years. <laughs> I'm still working on my Tibetan stuff. But it's, uh, it's well worth the effort. I mean, it's not about you losing your social life or anything. You, you're still dealing with the world. But you're dealing with the world with awareness. That's the thing that's lacking most people. They walk around, around like robots. Have it forming energy, vasanas. And never take time to think what they're really doing. They're just becoming a robot like everybody else. I always stop and take that breath. You know, as she was saying today, you got action reaction. Are you going to be a reactor to the things in life? Or are you going to take action? To surmise it might. Uh, Hindu teacher used to tell me, are you going to be a passenger on a train just looking out? Or are you going to become the locomotive? It's your choice. And we all have that choice. How big do you want to be? Oh, <laughs> how big do you want to be? There's no limit. <laughs> That's right. As long as we can conceive it. If you have imagination, God created the universe through his imagination. I'm putting a chemical thing in there. I was talking about uh, quantum physics and all of that. That, that didn't start it. Imagination started it. And then you build upon that. And that's why I'm harping on you guys about your visualization techniques. Learn how to visualize in time and space. Then you can create. No amount of chanting will do it, because that's the second level. You gotta have the chanting for the vibration of it to bring it forth in matter. But the visualization comes from the mind. So that means you have to compare it to your thought. Most people don't. Because at one point beyond, if you can focus on one point, change the whole reality of the world. But how many people can hold a thought for one minute without it going somewhere else? The only thought that's worthwhile holding for one moment is love. And they don't touch it.